ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to The Late Show. I'm Stephen Colbert, and I just want to start off. Thank you, thank you, please. Thank you. I don't want to stay off by saying happy Thursday. April Fools, it's Friday. Ha ha. <laughs> that, that was fun. Here's something, here's something we haven't talked about in a little while, COVID. We talked about it pretty much every day for two years, but in the last few weeks, it's become clear that it's over in that it will never be over. <laughs> so we're never gonna talk about it again, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. <laughs> You see, COVID's still out there. And last week, over half of the new cases were Omicron BA2, which some call Stealth Omicron, which I call BS on. <laughs> Something can't be stealth if we're detecting it everywhere. That's the viral equivalent of a ninja wearing a roadwork vest. <laughs> the White House, in response, Big fans of road construction here. The White House, in response, is proposing to jack up the FDA's budget with much of the $2.1 billion increase aimed at preparing for another pandemic. Ah, uh, you don't get another pandemic until you finish your first one. <laughs> which you never will, mister. Which you... <laughs> it's been two years. It's been two years since the first pandemic hit. And we, we all remember when the government rushed to provide relief to ordinary Americans. Well, it turns out some of those ordinary Americans are extraordinary jerks because prosecutors are now saying that folks ripping off pandemic relief was the largest fraud in U.S. history. Really? I thought the largest fraud was the claim that America runs on Duncan. Because <laughs> after a box of munchkins and a frozen mocha culotta, I am not running anywhere. <laughs> I am barely crawling to the couch. Some of... Are they a sponsor? Not tonight. Not tonight. Some of the fraud took place with uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, which was supposed to help small businesses keep their workers employed. The thing is, many of those businesses and workers who received the money didn't actually exist. For example, one woman claimed to generate over $800,000 in income and employed five individuals from a farm based in the yard of her Florida home. Okay, sounds fishy, but your home can be a farm because legally in Florida, meth is a vegetable. <laughs> and fresh, fresh. Bringing in the crop. These are crooks who have been caught haven't exactly been cooperative. One California couple sliced off their electronic monitoring bracelets and vanished in August, leaving behind their three teenage children. <laughs> wow. So on the downside, massive fraud. On the upside, house party at Brandy's. <laughs> and I'm making PJ. Uh, turning to the war in Ukraine, there is still a war in Ukraine, but at least there's still a Ukraine. And that's all because Ukrainian citizens <laughs> keep up their heroic resistance to the Russian invasion. And that heroism has taken some interesting forms lately. For instance, after Russia bombed a zoo in Kharkiv, one worker drove a van packed with kangaroos and wallabies to safety. That is so cute. That is adorable. And this isn't the first time the kangaroos have been targeted because the animals' enclosures have been repeatedly shelled. It's a story chronicled in the heartwarming family comedy we bombed a zoo. <laughs> I still can't believe Matt Damon did that. <laughs> they paid him in crypto. <laughs> uh, uh, made that up. Some other, some other surviving animals were also safely evacuated, like great apes, monkeys, and turtles. Well, that can't have been easy. Go, turtle, I've opened your cage, go! Free! <laughs> Run like the wind, the Russians are coming! The Russians are coming! Come on! And it just, you know what? Just, screw it, just duct tape him to the monkey. He'll be... <laughs> so, speaking of slow-moving, foul-smelling beasts, the former president... <laughs> we had... Wow. Oh, it's been a while, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while, I suppose. Old home week. 
We had a new official statement uh, this week from old Cult 45. <laughs> As the January 6th investigation continues to close in on him and his criminal associates, of course, he talked about the one issue everyone wants to hear about, his golf game. <laughs> a quick reminder, over a year ago, uh, my doctor advised me to stop doing my impression of the former president because it wasn't very good. <laughs> so, instead, once again, The Late Show will have the former president's statement, actual statement, read by someone with his same level of emotional maturity, <laughs> a seven-year-old boy. <laughs> Jim? Many people are asking, so I'll give it to you now. It is 100% true. While playing with the legendary golfer Ernie Els, winner of four majors and approximately 72 other tournaments throughout the world, Gene Sowers, winner of the senior U.S. Open, Ken Duke, and Mike Goods, both excellent tour players, I made a hole in one. Now, now remember, keep this in mind. He said this is 100% true. So I have no doubt his hole-in-one is just as real as his loving marriage. <laughs> but, but wait, there's way too much more. It took place at Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach, Florida on the seventh hole, which is playing 181 yards into a slight wind. I hit a five iron, which sailed magnificently into a rather strong wind with approximately five feet of cut, whereupon it bounced twice and then went clank into the hole. Clank? Clank? Golf balls don't clank? Does he not know what things sound like? What kind of see and say did he have as a kid? The cow says... <laughs> Will Smith just smacked the <laughs> out of me. <laughs> the statement somehow goes on. Anyway, there's a lot of chatter about it. Quite exciting. And people everywhere seem to be asking for the facts. Playing with that group of wonderful, talented players was a lot of fun. The match was Ernie and me, with no strokes, against Gene, Mike, and Ken. I won't tell you who won, because I'm a very modest individual. And you will then say I was bragging. And I don't like people who brag. Now, because... Because he constantly lies, there's no way to know if he actually got a hole in one. It's a lesson we all learned in that children's book, The Boy Who Cried Golf. <laughs> now, as stupid, as stupid as this stupid, stupid story is, this is exactly the kind of stupid life that stupid man should be living. Forget politics, sir. Instead of lying about winning an election, you can just lie about winning whatever dumb competition they've got going on at your club. I would be so happy to spend the rest of my life hearing more statements like this. Many people are asking, so I'll give it to you now. It is 100% true. While dining with the legendary competitive eater Joey Chestnut, winner of approximately 14 major Nathan's hot dog eating contests, and Bill Barr and Steve Bannon, both excellent eaters, I made a dog in one. I was eating into a slight wind with approximately five inches of chili. I shoved it in my mouth where opponent bounced twice and then went clank into my tongue. The match was Joey and me with no strokes. Except for Bill Ball, who had a minor stroke. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Ken Burns, Mandy Patankin, and a special appearance by John C. Riley. But when we come back, 